It is time for championship case number three. We're going to talk about Tyler Reddick and his championship cases today. For those of you who don't know, if this is the first one you're watching, we make championship case videos for all 16 playoff drivers. So no, these are not predictions. I'm not picking multiple people to win the championship, but this is the first non-Hendrick driver. This is the first Toyota driver we're going to talk about. Tyler Reddick's 2024 season. We're going to look at these tracks in the playoffs and we're going to talk about his potential pathway to a championship. So Tyler Reddick, his 2024 season has been this. He has one win. It came at the Talladega Super Speedway. He has seven or nine top fives, 15 top tens. It's the most top tens in the league this season. 449 laps led, which is good for the third or sorry, fourth most led this season. Three stage wins as well and is only 15 points out of the points lead. What's important about that? Playoff points. Get as many playoff points as you can. If you win the regular season championship, you get 15 of those. If you finish second, you get 10, third, eighth, fourth, seventh, and on and on. I think realistically, the worst Reddick will finish is fourth, but I'm going to say the same thing as I said for Chase Elliott yesterday. You have to win this regular season championship. You don't have the points right now, and yes, you could very well go out and win a race or two before the playoffs start, but... These playoff points are so important. There's no such thing as too many playoff points. Go win the regular season championship. Doesn't matter how you do it. Get those playoff points locked in to help advance yourself through the playoffs. Then outside of those you know, playoff points from the regular season championship, go win yourself a race or two. Go win some stages. Michigan's going to be a great opportunity. Darlington, you almost won this race in the spring. Great opportunity to get some more playoff points. The difference between Elliott and Reddick, though, is that Reddick has had winning speed much more than Elliott. And really, Reddick should have four or five wins right now. Darlington, he had a great shot before wrecking himself and Chris Buescher out of the race. Texas, they had winning speed, but they had some pit road issues. And the way cautions fell, it just really kind of didn't work out for them. Vegas, they were close, but not quite as good as Kyle Larson. Nashville, he had a great shot in those last closing laps. Chicago, it was the same thing, just a mistake by the driver there. So Tyler Reddick should have multiple wins at this point, but he only has the one. So they got to start racking up those playoff points because really, I got to say it, this first round is honestly the most concerning. Tyler Reddick doesn't have a lot of points to his name and the stats don't really back him up in this first round. When we look at Atlanta... In this next-gen era, in the super speedway era of Atlanta, Tyler Reddick has one finish in five races better than 25th. It was a top five back in the spring of 2023, but other than that, his finishes are 28th, 29th, 27th, 30th. Not pretty. Now, he has scored some stage points, but at the end of the day, when it comes to these playoffs, if he doesn't have a big point buffer like let's say he finishes fourth in the regular season he gets seven points so he's got 15 total maybe he wins darlington so he's got 20 that's a nice buffer but that can easily be erased at atlanta with a crash so i don't like this first race for him but he is a super speedway winner in the next genera he won the last one at talladega actually so if he can just squeak out a top 15 that's your goal. Top 15. You know what? Let's make it a top 20. Other playoff drivers are going to crash. Other guys are going to have their issues. If you can get a top 20, you've got some bonus points to help you. Maybe score some stage points in there. That's a good day considering their position. Then we go to this next race, Watkins Glen. Tyler Reddick's one of the best road course racers in NASCAR. You look at him, you look at Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, you look at Christopher Bell, William Byron, his other great road course racers. Tyler Reddick will be running in the top five, if not the top 10 in this race. All three races he's run at Watkins Glen in the T Cup Series, he's finished inside the top 10. Qualified inside the top five back in 2022, has scored stage points, has led a couple of laps. So Watkins Glen, I expect Reddick to, at worst, be in the top 10. I expect him to collect stage points. This will be his strongest race of the round, and they have to capitalize. If they have a bad Atlanta, get yourself some stage points. Compete for the win. Finish in the top five, because this is your best race. You have those bonus points, but you don't have a lot of them. You've got to capitalize at Watkins Glen, because as for Atlanta, 
It's a bad statistical track for Reddick. Well, it's kind of the same at Bristol, the cutoff race. He's yet to finish better than 15th in this next-gen era. Has only led four laps. Has only scored stage points in three races in his career. He only has one finish better than 10th. He has two top 10s total. So Bristol has really not been a strong track. You're seeing why I'm concerned about this first round. Atlanta, statistically, not a great track for him. Bristol, not a great track for him. But Watkins Glen, he's a great road course racer. He can collect some stage points there. And honestly, I think this first round is going to be about survival for Tyler Reddick. If he can simply survive, finish in the top 20 in all three races, get those stage points at Watkins Glen, maybe even get stage points at Atlanta, we could very well see Reddick get out of this first round. But if he gets out of this first round, I feel much better about his chances because going up to these next three races, oh boy. Kansas, he's the defending winner of this race. Now, 23-11, they missed the setup. They missed something in the spring at Kansas because historically, they've been the winning team at Kansas ever since their existence or ever since the next gen era, I should say. And the spring, both cars missed badly. Reddick started 15th and finished 20th. He scored stage two points, but he didn't do much outside of that. But outside of that spring, I'm going to call it a fluke. Reddick has run fantastic at Kansas, even when he was at RCR. He's led laps in, in the last six Kansas races. He's led laps in all five next-gen era races. He's the defending winner, as I said. He has a top 10 back in the spring of 2023, and he has a couple of wrecks, a couple of DNFs in there, or really one DNF, but a couple of poor results. But he's had good qualifying efforts. He's run up front there with the exception of the spring. I expect Tyler Reddick to be competing for the win at Kansas. I think they're going to fix whatever problem they had, and Tyler Reddick's going to be competing for the win. He's going to be up there with Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, uh, Martin Truex Jr. I think Tyler Reddick will be at worst sixth or seventh in this race. He's going to collect stage points. He's going to have a great day. Now we go to the next track, and that is Talladega. He's the most recent winner at Talladega. And in fact, in his history at 23-11, he's never finished worse than 16th. His finishers are 1st, 16th, and 16th. Now, other than that, his stats have been very up and down at Talladega. He has a top 10, a couple of top 10s back in his RCR days, but he has some DNFs, some crashes, and a, a 20th place in there. But if he can run, as I said, if he can compete for the win at Kansas, if he doesn't win it, if he finishes in the top five, collects some stage points, he can afford a somewhat bad day at Talladega. Other guys, just like Atlanta, other playoff guys are going to crash at this race. So if you crash, you'll be right there with them. Just finish in the top 20, as I said, for Atlanta. You've got a few points. You're going to have a good day at Kansas. Talladega, it's a great opportunity for you to just survive. And then we go to the Roval. Once again, Tyler Reddick, a great road course racer, has multiple wins on the road courses in his career, has three straight top 10s at the Charlotte Roval and including a runner-up back in 2021. He has led laps, 20-plus laps, in the last two races, has won a stage. So if he goes to the Charlotte Roval, even if he has a bad Kansas race again, if he crashes out at Talladega, if it comes down to a must-win, he could very well get it done at the Roval. But realistically, I think he runs top five at Kansas. I think if he can just survive at Talladega, he'll come into the Roval with a comfortable bu buffer. And even if he doesn't, he's going to be running up front. He's going to score stage points. He's going to run well at this race, and he'll advance to the round of eight. And as for that round of eight, it is a complete invert of Chase Elliott, who we talked about yesterday. Elliott, we said, Homestead in Vegas, uh, not so great. Martinsville, great. Well, Tyler Reddick, it's Homestead in Vegas, great. Martinsville, not so great. Now, if he can collect some stage points coming up to this point, if he can win the regular season championship, maybe pick up a win at Darlington, a win at Kansas, a stage win or two somewhere else, that'll put him in the 30 playoff point range, and he'll have a decent gap back to those guys at the 10 point range, which is where they usually are at the back half of the grid at this point. And when we come to Vegas and Homestead, Tyler Reddick, as I said with Kansas, will be competing for the win. Vegas, he finished runner-up in the spring, finished runner-up in stage one, runner-up in stage two, ran great in that race. He's finished in the top 10 and four out of the five races in the next-gen era, has led laps 
In three out of those five races, 2311s run great at Las Vegas in the next gen era. So I expect Tyler Reddick to do what he did in the spring, be up front, be competing for this win, have race winning speed. They just can't have problems. And that's another point I want to emphasize. 2311, they've been known to have pit road issues. This is the time of year you cannot have pit road issues. So they got to clean it up and they've done good at it recently, but They've got to clean it up. They cannot afford mistakes. They've got to run up front at these races. And then we go to Homestead and the numbers get better. Three top fives and four starts there. A third, a second, and a fourth. He's led a few laps there. He's got stage points there. Tyler Reddick at Homestead, we always expect to run well because he can run right on the wall just like Kyle Larson can. And I think if Tyler Reddick gets into this round of eight, I genuinely think he can win at Vegas. He can win at Homestead. When I picked him to win the championship in 2023, it's because I thought if he gets to this round, I think he can win one of these races. Same story in 2024. If he gets to this round of eight, he has a great shot at winning at Vegas, a great shot at winning at Homestead, and he could potentially knock his way into the championship four. But let's say he doesn't. Let's say he gets top fives at both these tracks, has a decent gap, a 20, 30, maybe even a 40-point gap to the cutoff, and that's great. But what's not great is his Martinsville stats. Only has two top tens there in his career. Has never led a lap. There are 500 laps, 400 lap races. He's never led a single lap at Martinsville. His last, his finishes, sorry, not his last, his finishes in the next gen era are this, 7th, 26th, 22nd, 35th, 18th. It's not been a pretty time for Tyler Reddick. His best finish is that 7th that he had in the spring. Martinsville, for some reason, has been a terrible track for Tyler Reddick. I don't know what it is, but if he has a bad homestead and he has a bad Vegas or something goes wrong in one of those races, they can't rely on Martinsville as a must-win situation like Chase Elliott can. They can't win at this track. I mean, they very well could, but statistically, looking at the numbers, this is not going to be a good racetrack for him. So in my opinion, if Tyler Reddick wants to advance to the championship four, he has to run top five at Vegas and Homestead, score stage points in both of them, give himself a buffer, or of course, just win one of those races and you don't have to worry about it but let's say he wins Vegas or Homestead and he advances to that championship race well he has some decent numbers at Phoenix he has two top fives in the next gen era three top tens he led 68 laps in the spring race this year Toyota looks much better at Phoenix than they have historically that's been their problem Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, whoever it is that makes it to that championship four. They have great seasons, but when they get to Phoenix, they just miss it. They are not as good as Hendrick, as Penske, and that has ultimately cost them. But this year, what we saw in the spring, Toyota is going to be the favorite going into this Phoenix race. Christopher Bell won the race. Tyler Reddick led a bunch of laps. He led 68 to be exact. He won a stage in the spring. Denny Hamlin led laps. Ty Gibbs, Martin Truex Jr. all led laps. So if Tyler Reddick gets to this championship four, he might be the favorite, actually, because of how well Toyota ran at this track in the spring. And even if they don't run well, you've always got the chance of the top three wreck out. This championship format's silly, but... In conclusion, Tyler Reddick's path to the championship four, that first round, straight up survival. It's not a pretty round for him. It's not great racetracks for him. But if he can survive in advance, that's what this format's about. It doesn't matter how ugly you do it. If he advances, that's a great sign because the next two rounds are really good for him. That second round, he's the most recent winner at Talladega. Kansas, a great track, the defending winner, the Roval, another road course. And then that round of eight, Homestead and Vegas, great tracks, but... You have to perform in those races. You have to get top fives at the very worst because Martinsville's not your best place. If he can get to Phoenix, he's a real threat. Toyota, they are legit at Phoenix now, and he's going to have a shot at the championship. So thank you for watching this championship case number three. Check. We've got uh, 13 more to go. So I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. It's going to be Tyler Reddick's team owner, actually, Denny Hamlin, his chances for a championship, we'll talk about them. I'm sure the comment section will be lovely in that one. But thank you for watching this again. I will add this to the playlist. We have a playlist if you do not know that. So if you miss someone, you can go check it out. But thank you guys for watching this again. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow for Denny Hamlin's championship case.